On this episode of Fishing Edge, we're embarking on a fishing and camping trip to Fraser Island in Queensland. Known as the largest sand island in the world, Fraser has spectacular scenery and endless fishing opportunities. However, back on the mainland and often regarded as the gateway to Fraser Island lies Harvey Bay, which is a town that has true coastal Queensland feel to it, with a great marina, loads of boats and heaps of fishermen. It's also the location of the long-standing and very well-known Fisherman's Corner Tackle Store. And it's here I'm meeting up with local guru, Dane Radosevic. And the Rapala rep, Greg Livingston. And it's here that our trip begins. So we're obviously here somewhere, Dane, where are we going to? Firstly, we're gonna run up through central Platypus Bay, fish a few isolated reef patches, rubble patches. Weather permitting, we're gonna run out past Breaksea. Yep. We've got a few different options we can do out there. Um, then we'll come back west and fish your northern and southern gutter systems, and hopefully by then we'll cross paths with a few different and, species. Yeah, endless species. Now, Greg, where do we camp along here? Uh, we'll camp right in there, mate. With awesome little spot, out of the weather. So Beautiful. All right, I'm fanging to go, boys. Let's go do the shopping. We need food. Let's do it. Let's do it. From the tackle store, our next stop is the supermarket to stack up on supplies for the upcoming days. And then from there, it's back to Dane's house, or Hotel Rad, as we called it, to sort out our mountain of fishing gear before getting some sleep in preparation for our early start the next day. All right, Dane, so where are we, mate? We're, uh, we've run about 30 nautical miles from Urangan Harbour. We're sitting just south of Rooney's Point at the moment. Um, we stumbled across a school of tuna, so. Beautiful, and it's the thing I love about this part of the world. This isn't where we're planning on fishing for the day. We've no. still got a long way to go, but there's heaps of life through here. And I find it amazing that we drove and drove and drove and there was nothing, and then it's like you just drive into bait, birds, and predators. Yep, yeah, you quite often find that, so. Beautiful, light spin rods, soft plastic stick baits bit of good early morning fun. Oh, I missed him. You got one on you? I'm on. I'm on. Here we go. Double hook up. Here we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. You drive and drive and drive and there is just nothing. And then you just drive into a wall of bait and a wall of fish. How cool is that? That is awesome. Bit of a mix of fish there. These are mackerel tuna. A few longies in there too. The odd long tail. Oh. Uh, where are we, mate? You come this side of me. It can be mayhem with these things when you get a double hook up. Oh, yeah. There were a few long tail in there. Next time, we might push a bit further in front of the school. We've got an absolute mountain of gear here for our camping trip. The back of the boat is full of food, fuel, and camping stuff, and there's fish busting up behind us. And this, let me tell you, is what makes Harvey Bay and Fraser Island such a wonderful, wonderful spot. Here we go, a nice Mac tuna. Chuck in free spill, you got it, liver? Look at that. Awesome. Now, Dane, would you say that is the staple sports fish in this part of the world that most people just, that's what you catch day in and day out? Oh, definitely. I mean, people travel all the way from Japan, overseas to come bang these tuna. Um, predominantly, they come in to chase the long tail, but Mac tuna, they go just as hard and... Not a bad second. Not a bad first cast. That's it. It's giving you some curry. I'll say. I think the lighter rod wasn't the best option, but anyway. He's got a mate with him. Yeah, that's another nice Mac tuna. When you're talking about having fun, this is one of the new Storm Mojo Nero's, and it's the same outfit I'd use for snapper fishing back home. But it shows how powerful light gear is these days when you can just 
bowl over a tuna like that. Nice work, mate. That is such a good sports fish. And the thing I find really interesting, when I've spun Mac tuna, generally it's always been with tiny, tiny little lures, like one of the most fussy tuna that go around. But the boys here said, Lee, chuck on that storm joker vert in hot pink, of all things. That is the colour in this part of the world. Toss him back, mate. Awesome. Let's see what else we can find. Let's go. Oh, they're on it. Oh, yes! Nice. Sink it down a bit, try and get below the Mac tuna. Definitely a Mac tuna, that one. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's do it. Right, guys, I think we better keep moving. We'll keep heading north, so. Better pay off. Have a look at this, Lee. So we're just north of the mark where we sounded up all that bait. There's yep. a few good shows now. Um, there's two good fish sitting there and a few fish holding tight to the bottom. I like this. There's a bit of life like that, that life on the bottom. But when I say life, it's that rubble and line. short weed. And... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So we'll just keep sounding, trying to find a few more fish. Then we'll pull up and have a drop. Sure, mate. What are you going to go with? Plastic. If you want to drop a jig, mix it up, have two different presentations yep. down there. For sure. We're just about to move spots because it's been quiet here, cranking all the gear in, and as often happens in this part of the world, as Livo's winding his jig up, which was on the bottom, he got smashed mid-water, and I think he's found himself a mackerel. If it's a spotty, it's dinner. It's dinner, if it's a Spanish, we've got to let it go. How come? So from Rooney's Point to Kungal Creek, there's a line and east of that you can't keep your Spanish. Oh. So ciguatera poisoning, it's one of the oh, okay. most common known areas for it, so you definitely don't want to get stuck with that. Don't want that. What do we got? What have we got? Yeah, nice Spanish. Yeah, cool. That would probably be what bit off a couple of my plastics, him or one of his mates. <sighs> nice Spanish mackerel. Beautiful. Awesome, That's well done, man. Dane's just getting us back up onto the spot where there's a heap of bait and a fair few big fish. Now, we've got so much gear in the boat, fuel, food, all the stuff, but we've got a pile of fishing gear, and the reason for that is because we've got so many fishing options. We've got heavy outfits up in the rack up there with big poppers and stick baits because there's GTs and stuff out the front. We've got some outfits we can use for catching marlin. But the stuff we're gonna use a lot or the most is gonna be everything from our little Gamoku jig outfits just like this through to sort of six to eight kilo spin sticks with a plastic or a little stick bait, things like that. It's very versatile gear and you can catch a small fish but you could catch everything up to a small marlin with stuff like this. So. Lots of gear, but it's for a reason too. We can have multiple rods rigged, plastics, jigs, stuff like that, and you can just swap rods as you need to. I've already done a couple of drifts with this jig, but this time I'm gonna switch over and go to a plastic, and it saves having to cut stuff off and retie and do all that. Come on. Oh, that's a cracker. Is it pretty rough bottom here? Nah, we're fishing over pretty flat bottom. Just play him, don't go too hard on him. Sweet. That's pretty cool, we just came over a really nice show. Some really good fish came up on the sounder there and almost instantaneously hooked up, so. What have we got? Silver? It's looking a bit Trevally. Trevally-ish of some sort. Or it might be a big diamond. Oh, it's your diamond. Oh, wow, I've never caught one of these. It's not a super big one, but. They would be one of the most spectacular looking of the Trevally. Oh, that's cool. Get the sunlight on it. Wow. I don't think I've been that excited about a fish in quite a while. That is absolutely unbelievable. Look at all the- Look at the fins on it. Bits going on here. Like that's part of its fins. Those long black hair like bits. That's awesome, man. Well done. Dude, I am stoked. I am absolutely wrapped just on one of my favourite things in the world, a Koika jig. 
that's just a 60 grammer on the Gamoku jig outfit with the metalloid and that's so cool. That's cool man, let's do it again. There's plenty more down there. Mate, that is insane. Thanks for that Dane. And this is what makes a fishing trip. I mean we've still got camping to go, we've got all sorts of stuff to, to do but I could quite comfortably go home happy. Oh definitely. Not many people get to catch that them so cool. it's cool. And you got one how big? A metre? Metre 20. It was a horse. It was yeah, That is crack. red hot. I might just get a photo of this fish and then I'm going to send it back. I'm just changing my jig at the moment. I'm going from a slow rocker, which is this very compact Gamoku jig. It's got a lot of flutter to it, back to a Koika. Same color, but a slightly different action. This guy's got a bit more of a faster fall. He's got a tighter wobble, but he's still got basically that same shape. And I'll show you a really easy way to deal with jigs because you've got assist hooks and bits and pieces going on. And what I like to do is have, in this case, a 10 kilo black magic rolling swivel at the top there, a tough split ring, and my assist hooks, those little VMC assist hooks right there. What makes these guys work on these jigs is those little UV tinsley bits. The fish tend to bite them a lot. But rather than have a set of hooks on every jig and they all get caught up together, a good set of split ring pliers like these alloy black magic ones are an absolute must on trips like this. They've got cutters in them, but these jaws are perfect for little and big split rings. So as all I'm gonna do here is grab the split ring, just like that, get my jig, put the jig on like so, and then we're gonna work that around. And in two seconds, we're gonna be able to go fishing again. And we are back in business and ready for fishing. You can just see Lee's jig being worked right through the school of those fish there. I had to get a bite out of that. Look at that sounder. That there is what you would call active fish. See how they're all pushing up off the bottom here? You just have to get a bite. And on that one, I didn't even cast. I just free spooled the plastic straight over the side, hit the bottom. And I actually just gave it a bit of a slow pull because it's got a big paddle tail on. Get that tail kicking and it got whacked straight away. Love fishing this light gear. This is actually a rod that Livo designed, and he designed it for up in this part of the world for doing all this sort of stuff. This Mojo Nero. What have we got? What have we got? Oh, little tiny GT. Little GT. It? Look at that. Shane got whacked. Oh, that's better. Look at that guy there. Big or small, you can tell the GT, just that bull head on it, the big scoots in the tail. Yeah. Tough jaw. That's the Storm Joker Shad, and I love it because I can just fish it super slow, just get that big tail kicking through the water. This guy thought it was pretty good. We'll pop him back. How'd you go, Dane? Oh, I think it's another tuna. It's not, is it? Yeah. That'd probably be why he was 20 metres off the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. There we go. I'll pop that out because we'll make this nice and quick. <laughs> There you go, mate. Another Mac tuna. Not quite what you're after. What do you reckon, mate? Doesn't feel overly large. It looks a, like a bottomy fish. It's red. Ooh. It's like a red emperor. Give us a look at that. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Look at that for a fish. That is awesome. Pass him to you there, cool. Dane. What a beautiful piece of gear that is. Nice Great. juvenile red emperor. You call that a juvenile? That's yeah, far it's bigger than juvenile. any red emperor that I've ever caught. Every time I catch them, they're about that big. The biggest one I've ever heard reported off the top end here is 24 kilo. No. So this is a little pup compared to that one, but wow. They're, um, they're quite common on these inshore grounds. We do get a lot of these small ones. If you get one up around sort of six, seven, eight kilo, that's a pretty good fish for, for here. Mate, that's a fish to be very happy with because that's also gonna be dinner. That'll be dinner. Straight on the ice with that one. Let's go. Alrighty, boys, let's move on. We haven't even got to our spot yet and the day's getting away from us, so let's get going. Let's get that red on ice first. Oh, look at the big one. I thought that was the bottom. 
Yes. How cool is that? That is incredible. And I can honestly say, as a fisherman, I reckon we get to see some of the most amazing things ever and some of them we take them for granted but to see a whale and a calf like that and turtles and dolphins and just what we see is it's pretty special. So we've driven a million trillion kilometres and apparently we're at spot number X. We are. What's the plan here, mate? So yeah, we've just driven, oh, we're about 120k offshore at the moment and um, we're going to have through a couple of poppers and stick baits, see if we can get a GT to come up and smack us where you'll possibly see cobia, kingfish and the like swimming around. So you never know what you're going to get out here. It's pretty cool. Let's hope it happens. You know fishing gets serious. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You know fishing gets serious when you fall over and you've got to wear gloves. <laughs> Dane and Greg have been frothing to do this all morning. And when it comes to GT fishing, you'll find that I'm usually a little bit slower off the mark. My big guns, you know, they just love fishing great big heavy tackle like this. What we've got is 50 to 80 pound Azores popping rods. Livo's got a stick bait. Dane's got a big popper. Matching these to the Azores 80 and 90 Akuma spin reels. These guys are literally tough as nails and they're not expensive. We've got them loaded with 80 pound Black Magic Rainbow Braid and 130 pound Black Magic Tough Trace Leader. You're gonna need every bit of what you've got in your muscles and your tackle if you hook a big GT in this shallow reef encrusted water. Oh, that's a big rainbow runner. Oh, is it? That's sick. I've never caught one of them. That's really cool. Very powerful. They look quite a bit like a kingfish, obviously in colour, yellow tail, all that sort of stuff. That pointy sort of head. And mate, big fish. Look at those purple lines, they're awesome. They're cool, aren't they? I've actually used these in Fiji for dog tooth bait. We rig them up as a swim skip bait. bait swim swim bait, skip bait, and they just get cream. That's awesome. We'll pop this guy back. Eek. Oh, what a fish. Awesome, so what's that Trevally species number four, I think it is yeah. for the morning? Diamond, tea leaf, GT. Bludger. And bludger. Wow, that is, sorry guys, that is a wonderful fish and it has just engulfed it, isn't it? inhaled that plastic. Uh, I think I got that there. There we go. Nice. Little plastic, big fish. Yep. That's awesome, mate. Well done. They put a good fight up, don't they, for the oh, size? Mate, it? incredible. Heaps of fun on light tackle too. You're not busted at the end of it. You're happy no. to do it again. Like I said before, mate, quite often these things will beat the GTs to a popper. Yep. And uh, you get twice their size. That's yeah. an amazing fish. Right, Let's do what we need to do and get him back. See you, buddy. There he goes. That was about as good as it gets, I reckon, Dane. A nice little G-banger, a little pack attack. Mate, pretty cool. It might not be the biggest GT in the world, but... I reckon he had 10 goes at it between him and his mate. Oh, there was four or five of them all attacking at the one time. We had two, one on the rear hook, one on the centre hook. And Got it halfway in and then a big groper come and ate the back one. Graham the groper decided he wanted it more than we did. Straight in the rear treble. And it's all about that current and tide and all this funny looking water that's starting to roll through here now. Yeah, that's it. We really had to wait for the current to pick yeah. up, form those pressure edges and back eddies and now that they're forming, we actually have an area to target and locate the fish, so it's good. That's we'll, it. Um, should see some more action. Toss him back, mate. And, it, and it's interesting too that, you know, in fishing, you've got to back yourself sometimes, don't you? Oh, because definitely. we were like, should we move, shouldn't we? And then you said, no, it, we just need current. Soon as there was that bit of trickle of current, birds popped up, bait starts to ripple, action happens. That's it. This is us for the night, mate. Yep, let's do it. Let's set up camp. Boys have set the camp up. It's a very basic camp, which is just how you like it. This is all our cooking stuff for dinner. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy a Fraser Island sunset. 
and get excited in preparation for what tomorrow will bring. The next episode is the second part of our Fraser Island journey with more spectacular scenery and fishing that you could only dream of.